and welcome to another episode of what to do with those violins and today we will be talking about choosing your violin so we've got electric and acoustic violin and what's actually the main difference between these two instruments because both you play using the same technique and uh, I mean, is sometimes very often people say, oh, why are you playing? It's not violin. Yes, it is violin, but it's just not the acoustic one. All the rest, you know, how you use fingerboard, how you tune it, how you use um, fine tuners, how you hold it, everything else is the same. So what are the differences? Electric violin. I think the best thing about this instrument, not this particular one, although I love this one, but the, um, the best part of playing electric violin is that they are quiet, they are silent. Like silent, they're quiet. Let me grab my bell actually. When you play them without being plugged into any power, they literally sound. It's, uh, the sound is very dull because there's no body to the instrument, there's nothing um, for the sound to, to be, there's no sound chamber as such. But the good thing about it is that you can practice almost anywhere. So if you live in an apartment or your family doesn't like your play or, you, I don't know, any circumstances or you have to practice late at night, um, that's a great option and I actually recommend that to anyone who's got like anxiety connected with practicing like I've had massive anxiety I would not practice um, I would not touch violin for a good year and a half I had a break you know it was like um, I just I just couldn't I was so afraid that someone might say something or people might not like it because of my few experiences in life and then I got the electric violin and I discovered, wow, I can just play my heart out. I can have uh, my headphones on and no one else actually hears what I can hear, you know, because I put backing track on. Or if you want to practice even symphony excerpts, you know, like you just put the symphony on, headphones on and there you go. I just hit myself in the teeth. So there you go, and it's a really, really great fun. Um, the other thing, um, if you are an event violinist, or you're planning to, or you would like to perform in front of people, or you would like to go busking, which is, by the way, the best way to overcome your performance anxiety, um, you can just plug it in, plug it to a speaker, and depending on the power of your speaker, many people can hear you or you know PA system whatever uh, you just being heard playing ele electric violin allows you to experiment with the sound so if you plug yourself into a software you can suddenly play various instruments you can create different sounds um, and it's much easier than on acoustic violin I mean probably you can if you plug your violin if you plug your acoustic violin to sort of any pickup sound that will trans transmit the sound to the to the laptop, uh, you might be able to do exactly the same. But good news for the learners, I think the biggest um, difference is that on electric violin, it's much easier to create a good sound because you can just press put a little bit of pressure and um, the sound is pretty good because it, the sound is um, kind of electric <laughs> it's not produced as much by the skill of the weight of your shoulder and arm and you know this is it's a very delicate manner here you know how you deal with operate your bow to create a good sound so on electric violin it's much easier to just you know have a good sound because normally uh, the beginners have a problem with scra scratchy sounds etc but on acoustic violin you just literally I, I apply no pressure and the sound actually responds and you can hear it in your headphones or in the speaker 
out loud, however you have it set up. Um, the minus of that is if you swap to acoustic violin back, um, you're kind of losing that ability to create good sound. It's much harder to play acoustic violin than electric. And I've uh, experienced that recently, you know, you inspired me to actually pick up my acoustic violin and I was playing some exercises on, on the violin and it, I was exhausted. Like I can play three, three and a half hours on this violin, no problem. If I had to play the same songs on my acoustic violin, that would have been a struggle. Um, so yeah, those are the best things. The minus, I would say, is... Oh yeah, and you don't need expensive bow for this, really, because this, again, it doesn't impact the quality of the sound as much. So, um, that's good, that's good, whatever is good. What else is good? <laughs> What's good? Um, or oh, what's maybe the cons is that you have to have either wireless systems, a transmitter and receiver that you will plug into your um, to your speaker, or you need a lead. And if there's no power, if there's power cut, then we've got a problem. Or if your speaker dies, if your transmitter dies, like mine died on my last event, and I had to quickly plug into a lead, which was a little bit stressful, but you keep your poker face on and, uh, you know, I managed to just get through um, that problem. And there's a whole, you know, interesting side of uh, electric violin as well, which I probably don't know, um, but playing with the software, it's all kind of a little bit geeky, which I like. And yeah, I love my electric violin. And the acoustic violin which is um, the, the, the classical violin, the violin that people normally usually learn um, how to play a violin. Uh, and this is my instrument. I was very lucky because I got it as a child and I was waiting, actually waiting for a few years, because that's the full size, to actually get to play this particular instrument. It's been with me since I was six seven yes and um it's uh, my it's my baby acoustic violin is slightly harder to play because the sound is created by you and by your pressure of on the instrument of the bow on the strings and you've the beauty of the acoustic violin is that you've got the whole spectrum of sounds, of colours, you know, like musical colours that you can paint with, the whole palette, which you don't have with the electric violin. Like the electric violin, you have to create it in, in a, you know, a recording uh, app or something. But playing acoustic violin allows you to have those very subtle sounds, which I love, and uh, professional, professional, I mean like top elite musicians um, use their whole palette and they just got it on the tip of their little finger. <laughs> I'm not that great, although, you yeah, know, I had my past, you know, Tchaikovsky, Violin Concerto, Bach, Sonatas, Partitas, all that stuff. Uh, so, I know a little bit about it, quite a lot. It's harder to get the good sound on it, on the acoustic violin, but once you get it, you get, you, you've, got, you've got the sound, so it's just the full... It's just, uh, it's just there. And if you want to mute it, I don't actually have it. You can put um, like, a, like a little mute here, little. Not the, not the sordino, not the tiny one that you use in the orchestra, like for practice, for example, say like a big metal one, but it does damage the bridge. So, actually they have rubber ones as well, I think. Yeah, but then they're most effective, they're like uh, kind of, you know, when you practice in a hotel room, this is where you use the metal ones. They, they, they absolutely mute your violin almost completely, no one can hear it, but they do damage the bridge in my case, anyway, the way it did. Um, the other thing with acoustic violin, 
I feel that, you know, although I was lucky and I've got a very good instrument, it is tricky to get a good quality instrument because everything like wood the instrument is made made of what type of wood the quality of wood that's why you've got all those sorts of you know amazing Stradivarius, Guarneri's etc etc um, and depends on the luthier that made it so you've got uh, modern acoustic violins that are beautiful amazing wonderful quality but they are expensive um, because it's a handmade you know, handmade instruments, everything handmade is expensive in general. The same goes with the bow, you know, um, choosing a bow for electric violin is not that a big deal, but choosing the right bow for your acoustic violin, I mean, probably I'm just talking, you know, from the perspective of a pro professional, um, but if you are anything above, like, a school level, um, you're probably not watching that video, <laughs> but just want to let you know it's uh, with the with the bows is like a little bit like ones with Harry Potter. You know, it's you you pick up the bow, you play it on the instrument, and it chooses you. You're like you know that's the bow that you need, and it's good for your hand. It's the right uh, weight, right? There's different wood woods as well, and uh, there's a whole again the whole spectrum that I'm not really familiar with. Um, but it's quite interesting um, and it would be actually nice to, to have a little chat with Lucia um, about it. As well, you need to clean your electric violin because there's dust from touching it um, and you have to maintain your cleaner violin. You know, there's special, um, special products that you actually use to not to destroy the varnish that's very important, that's why you see whenever I handle my violin um, you can see it from the years of, you know, this violin is, is a bit old it, it, probably myself and someone touched it here so it's kind of the, the, the coloration and the same on the other side and here, can you see? so that's why you've got the neck, the neck doesn't have any varnish on it so you just hold it by the neck and if you need to support it, support it from the bottom, to don't touch the body, it's the worst thing. And if you do, I mean, this violin needs actually cleaning a bit. Um, you know, give it, maintain it, keep the maintenance of your violin, look after it, care for it. Uh, I cannot really speak for the manufactured violins, um, although they... The same, they do need maintenance because if there is a build up of ro 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 rosin here or in general gunk, then your instrument just won't sound well. Um, so that's that's the thing. And uh, if you are if you insist on playing acoustic violin, either you know set yourself a budget and uh, try to go around, you know, different shops, maybe, um, sometimes antique, surprisingly antique shops have violins and um, if they, you know, you have to look for things like if they have no um, cracks here or at the body, you know, in general, like they're in a good condition because you don't want to spend thousands or hundreds on refurbishing the instrument or just go to a luthier, to a violin shop and ask, you know, ask for advice. Um, if you are buying violin off the internet, um, I think I recommended one, yeah, I have one violin, I forgot the name now. It's on my channel. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please um, leave it in the comment section and um, see you next time. Take care.